Food Heals Podcast, episode 192. We grow up with the idea that our government is regulating things to protect us. You right. know, we have to click it or ticket. You have to wear a seatbelt. But when it comes to uh, these chemicals, they just they just aren't. Why is that? It's the answer that's behind so Everything? many exactly. so many of the things. Money. Follow the money, baby. <laughs> that's what I thought you were gonna say. Follow the money. <laughs> Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben and Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately. All right, welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody. And I'm her co-host, Susie Hardy. Welcome, Susie. <laughs> Thank you. I felt like you said it different this time. I did. Today's guests are Cameron and Andrea. They are pioneers of the Farm to Face movement and founders of the natural organic skincare line Apothecary 90291, which is an homage to where they live in Venice, California. Growing up, Andrea was surrounded by the most stylish and beautiful women in Europe who taught her the secrets to beautiful, clear skin. And the secret was oils. Her mother was a biochemist and taught her the beautifying properties of essential oils. Andrea also spent eight years as a surgical intern to one of the world's top plastic surgeons, so she has a deep understanding of skin and aging. She paired this knowledge with her personal philosophies of simplicity and good health to create her own natural skincare regime with her husband, Cameron. Apothecary 90291 was born. And Susie, we didn't know where this interview was going to go, but we got so much we information. We never know. We never know. But this one was shocking when I we had get an to idea the middle. Though. Okay. It's true. Yeah. It's true. I mean, wh- the, the more I talk to them offline, I was like, this could be six hours of interview. I know. They had so much to talk about. Yeah. And, you know, where it went, I'm really glad it went there. It's really interesting. So stick around, Food Heals Nation, because you're probably going to be surprised. I know I was. Buckle your seatbelts. <laughs> we ain't just talking about skincare. It's going to get deep. We're going to talk about Crohn's disease, all sorts of colitis, worms. and how worms might just heal Help. your body. <laughs> but first, a couple of days ago, Susie and I did a really fun Facebook Live. It was live, people. It was live in the it was yard. On Facebook. We did it in the yard and the sun kind of set. So we had like this beautiful sunlight, sunsetty lighting. They call it magic hour. But then it slowly disappeared and we were in the dark and we were talking. It and was near dark. It, was, it got dark. And, and <laughs> so we wrapped up the live. But um, we had fun and we wanted to play it for you in case you didn't get to see it. If you're not in our Facebook group, which is where we do the live at foodhealsgroup.com, definitely join so you can see all the fun antics we get into. But until then, we just wanted to play it before we get into our episode. Roll Roll it, Roxy! So we wanted to go live because we get all these questions all of the time. And while we try to email people back, we don't always get to. And while we try to be present in the Facebook group, um, we can't always answer everything, although I do try very hard. But um, there's two questions that have come up lately a lot, so we thought we would address them. And then we also have a really exciting announcement. So announcement. One of the ones that comes up a lot is about carbs. So what is the kind of the question and what's your answer for well, that? Well, being in LA, you know, you hear often that like carbs are the enemy. Don't eat bread. Carbs are bad, bad, bad. You yeah. want to try to get protein and eliminate carbs that it helps contribute to weight gain. And um, recently I just decided to say, screw that because <laughs> I like bread and I like carbs <laughs> and I don't believe in cutting out anything um, and going to any extremes, that everything needs to be in balance. Yes. And, Hi, Jennifer. Um, and if you look at what our body needs, our body actually needs carbs for energy. Proteins are actually for rebuilding and, and maintaining muscle mass. Um, carbs are for energy, and fats are for long-term energy. And uh, so, Hi, Kimberly. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to keep doing it. Keep going. And for healing, because there's healthy fats. So there's, there's a way about perceiving it in that, I think if you, oh, love, 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 look at all the hearts. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, Hi, Lauren. That I recently experienced uh, falling in love with a bowl of white rice. And I know, like, I was in L.A. sitting next to uh, a, a, a new date. Yeah. A f- total first date next to me on my left. And, and the girl had never, um, it was at a sushi bar. And she had never had sushi. And she was asking for brown rice. And while I love brown rice, 
I just felt like having some white rice and I really enjoyed it and it felt really good. And my point is that you need to find a way to listen to your body. Hi doggies. Hi doggies. <laughs> that, um, and that going to any extremes is never good. That we need all of the fruit, all of the macronutrients, fats, carbohydrates, and proteins, and we need to have a balance. And you also need to find out what's good for you because yes. every body is different. Everybody's genetics are different. Everybody's backgrounds are different. Everybody's tastes are different. You need to find a way to, to round out your diet, to get all of your nutrients, and you can do that in a way that's both beneficial and tasteful. I completely agree. And I feel like this is such an important question because people want there to be one answer and there is not. Because just like Susie said, everybody is different. And so for me, I've never had a problem with carbs or gluten. And so I, I can eat them and be fine. But if you do have a problem, if you have a food allergy, if you have been diagnosed with something like celiac, then that is the time to cut it out. But you have to listen to your body. Hi Vince. Hi Kobe. Love you guys. Um, so you have to listen to your body. And if you're not sure what your body is telling you, because sometimes we get mixed messages and it could be stress and it's not actually the food, or it could be food and it's not actually what we think it is. So we're listening to our bodies. And if you're not sure what's going on, you can visit a functional medicine doctor. What they're going to do is they're going to test your hair, your spit, your blood, your pee. She your, said spit. I forget what else. Um, stool, everything. All samples, your fluids. Okay. Everything. <laughs> Sorry. We're going to get graphic, but that's what we do here on the Food Heals Podcast. And they're going to test everything and they're going to come back with your results and they're going to say, you know what? You have this food allergy or you have this food um, sensitivity or you are deficient in this vitamin. You're going to know exactly what you got to do to get your body back into balance. So don't listen to the hype. You know, whatever is trendy, it may not be for you or it may be for you. I mean, it's great right now that gluten-free is trending for celiacs. It is great that veganism is trending for vegans. It's fabulous, but it doesn't mean it's perfect for you. So you guys, if you want to know who to go and see, we have all of the recommendations in our Facebook group. Go to Food Heals Nation. What is it? Food Heals Group. Dot com, and that's where we have our recommendation. Another thing that's been working phenomenally for me is intermittent fasting. Do you guys know what that is? Kimberly says, I like white rice sometimes too. I love white rice. I'm not giving up my white rice. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> Je Amen. Thanks, Lauren. Jennifer, I so needed to hear this. Oh. We love you guys. Um, so another thing that's been working phenomenally for me is the intermittent fasting. Agree with you too, Vince. You know we're always on the same page. I'll see you, I'll see you in a couple of days. Um, all right, sorry, side conversations are happening. So um, what that means is that I am personally limiting the amount of time per day that I am actually eating. So I'm not having breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm not eating as soon as I wake up and I'm not eating right before I go to bed. I'm limiting that to a six to eight hour window, sometimes even smaller, depending on how my day is going. But that has transformed my body. It has given me more energy. So one of the myths that I bought into that was told to me by a doctor years ago was that I needed to eat every few hours because I had low blood sugar. Now, may, whether or not that is true, that I have low blood sugar, I don't even know at this moment because I don't feel like I have low blood sugar. I Can feel you like tell? I have energy. <laughs> I feel kind of energized. Yeah. And I've been intermittent fasting today. But um, so I bought into this myth that I had to eat all the time. But what was happening is that was making me more exhausted and giving me chronic fatigue. Well, hold up. Okay. That's not a myth for me. If I did what she did, I think I would stab somebody. I can't do intermittent fasting. <laughs> Don't let Susie stab and anyone. And this is actually, I think, in my genes. My mom was the same way. Um, that she couldn't, she needed to eat breakfast early, you know, before she came down you know, and ate breakfast, she was very angry. And I'm the same way. I don't think I could do what Allie does, but for her it works. So this is what we're saying. You have to find what works for you and just do it. Yes. Love you, Janice. Thank you so much. Vince is looking into intermittent fasting. So it's exactly like we're saying. Susie and I are host of the Food Heals podcast, but we don't agree on everything because our bodies are different. We don't eat the same way. Sometimes she's we don't, wrong. Sometimes, sometimes I am wrong. <laughs> sometimes I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but we love each other anyways. Yeah. And there's no right and wrong sometimes. It's what's right for you. It's not, everyone is different. So that's really the point that we want to stress. But there's been another question that keeps coming up. So we're going to shift focus really quick and see if you guys are interested in this topic too. Because what happens also is that Susie and I get a lot of business questions where um, you guys are emailing us or Facebook messaging us and going, what has doing this podcast done for you personally and professionally? How do you market this podcast? How do you monetize this podcast? How has it changed your lives? And it has changed our lives so much. Before I had the Food Heals podcast, I was a failed blogger. 
I was like, I'm gonna type a bunch of stuff that I believe in and everyone's gonna read it. Guess who read it? You, your Me. husband. Maybe Dan, he wasn't even my husband yet. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know who read it. Maybe Kobe, my friend, I probably sent her one. She was on earlier, but no one read the stupid blog because I didn't know what I was doing. Starting a podcast changed everything because iTunes does something that no other platform does where it gives you this opportunity to speak to people in such a way that they get to hear your voice, develop a relationship with you, and you don't have to start from zero like you do with Facebook and YouTube where their iTunes actually gives you all these two months where you're on their new and noteworthy. And so it's a great opportunity for you to get your voice heard. So if you are out there and you're like, I wanna share my story, whether it's about health and healing or about something else you're passionate about, iTunes, Apple Podcasts can change your life, raise your brand, and really create an audience for you to share your story with, with people that wanna listen. I have been preaching about health for so long, and you know what? Some people don't wanna hear it. So I'm gonna shut up, I'm not gonna tell them <laughs> at Thanksgiving dinner what I think anymore. But if you wanna to listen to my podcast, you can listen. And if you don't, that's cool. <laughs> that's true. So that leads into two announcements. That's right. Okay. We have two events coming up. It's getting really dark. I'm really we're sorry. We're losing our light. We're losing light, people. All right. So um, we're going to do two events. One is in April. When is Italy? In June. When is Italy? June 2nd. To June 9th. To June 9th is our Italy Junior retreat. in Italia. And before that, when is our other retreat? Uh, April 20th and 21st. Okay. Thank you. April 20th and 21st. This is a brand new announcement. We have not announce this on the podcast yet oh so you're getting first dibs from this facebook live that we're doing from my yard which just got really dark but the dogs are still chilling back here so we're having fun <laughs> but yeah sorry it got so dark so fast but our Let's first speed it up our we're first okay lights. here we go all right before you guys leave don't leave okay so we're gonna do a boot heels mastermind <gasps> oh the first the first ever and so this is for all of you out there who are business owners, entrepreneurs, or you want to start something, whether it's a YouTube channel, whether it's a podcast, whatever it is where you wanna share your wellness message with the world. Maybe you have a transformational story, maybe you are uh, some sort of functional medicine practitioner, or you are helping people in some way and you wanna get your message out there. We wanna help you do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mastermind your business. Here in LA, there are eight spots. We're gonna eight. One day mastermind, Friday, all day. You're gonna fly out here, you're gonna hang out with us. We're gonna go through every element of your business and we're gonna help you take it to the next level. Then, Saturday, day two, what are we doing? It's glorious. It's glamorous. glorious. It's glamorous. We're gonna have a glam squad come over. We are going to go to the Humane Society Gala at Paramount Pictures, which is, I want in, you are in, Jennifer. Ooh, <laughs> Lauren, you are in too, you are all in. So fun, okay. I've never been. Allison has been talking about this. This is the best event in, the, in, in LA it is the All best year. event of the year. I look forward to it every year. It's so much fun. It's so glamorous. It's so beautiful. So start shopping for your ball gowns. I yes. already did. Yes. So you're going to get a hot dress. We're going to have hair and makeup come over. We're going to take a limo to Paramount Studios. It is the best event. It is the best plant-based food. You're going to cry when you see the videos. You are There are, are always celebrities there. I've had deep conversations with Kesha. Yes. Kesha people. And who else? About the Me Too movement. Who Before else? Me Too was a thing, by the way. She's just open and honest about her experience. Who else? Um, Steven Tyler. Steven Tyler. Yes. Aerosmith. Um, so many people. Leslie Durso will be there, who's also going to be at our Italy retreat. So, if you guys want in, email us right now. Info at Food Heals Nation. Tell us you want in, and we will tell you how you can get 20% off, which we're going to give to the first five people. Five people who sign up. 20% off. So just email us, say, I want in to the mastermind and we will let you know. All right. We have one more announcement, which most of you, most of them already know. Maybe. Tell okay. them about Italy. 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 We're going to Italy. We're going to make this quick because we're losing our light. I know. It's so dark. Sorry. <laughs> in June, June 2nd to June 9th, we're going to be staying in Amalfi, which is one of the most beautiful places on the face of the planet. I have been there. Allison is not. I speak nope. Italian. I'm going to be your translator. I do not. We're going to eat amazing Italian food, vegan Italian food. We're gonna stay at a villa. We're gonna have 
cooking lessons with the beautiful Leslie Durso. Yes. Vegan cooking lessons. We're going to have our own infinity pool overlooking the Amalfi Coast. We're going to be mean... swimming in the mare, in the sea. We're going to go on a boat tour. What else are we going to do? Shopping. We're going to go restauranting. We're going to yes. we're going to live it up for a week. So if you want to join us personally in Amalfi, Italy, Allie. Um, that one is at www.foodhealsnation.italy. Yeah. Slash Italy. Slash Italy. Thank you. <laughs> I should know my own links. We're losing the light. We love you guys so much. Bellissimo. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you guys for watching. Um, we're also going to have a podcast episode all about the events that we have coming up. So if you want to know more, that will be coming up. You can always send us your questions at info at foodhealsnation.com. And you can always join our Facebook group at foodhealsgroup.com. Love you guys so <gasps> much. Thanks for all the hearts. <laughs> we see that it makes us happy. It does. <laughs> the Food Hills Podcast starts now. Today we're here with two intriguing guests. And Susie, thank you for inviting them. It's my pleasure. I met Cameron very briefly at a party and then was introduced to their products through a gift. I said to myself, they have to be on our show. Yeah. And wow, am I glad that I invited them because they gave us a lot a lot of information. There's a lot of things that we didn't even get to ask them or get to cover. So we'll definitely have to have them back. Their natural organic skincare company, Apothecary 90291, adheres to the philosophies of creativity, charity, and great health. We're so excited to have them on the show. Welcome, Cameron and Andrea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks so much for having us. We're so excited. So this is actually a personal connection that I actually got to know you guys through your products before. I knew you, but we have a mutual friend. We do. And our mutual friend had a beautiful baby girl, and I helped throw her shower. And she gave me your products as a thank you gift uh, for throwing her shower. And I said, oh, what is this? And I tried them, and I loved them. And uh, we connected, and I said, you guys have to be on our podcast. All of what you created your company and your products to be are perfectly in line with what we believe and what we use. So you have a beautiful skincare line. Tell us about your story, who you guys are, how you started the skincare line. I'm Andrea Farkash. Um, I grew up in Romania, more exactly in Transylvania, which is the center part of Romania. I came to the U.S. in 96 mm -hmm. and I went back to Europe uh, to study for my neuroscience wow. uh, a few years ago. I uh, developed this uh, skincare line out of really of necessity. For yourself. For, for myself. Your... Yeah. I was living in Switzerland and uh, in Geneva. The winters are very windy because of the lake. Mm -hmm. There is not much snow, but uh, it's quite windy. My wonderful apartment had tons of heat way too much heat mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so my skin was getting so dry mm -hmm. and i didn't know what to do so i was trying all sorts of creams you know both the swiss and the french are well known for their skincare mm -hmm. products right. so i have tried all sorts of skincare products um, and finally i i went and i've talked to some of my professors and some you know, dermatologists they were all suggesting, well, you have to do oils in the winter. There's nothing else you can do. You have to do oils. And then finally, I also talked to my mom, who is uh, has a PhD in um, biochemistry. Wow. Mm. But mom used to make her skincare products when I was a kid. And... Uh, she made them herself. Yeah, they. Oh, were, cool. She had. Uh, she had lots of friends who were pharmacists. So part of their, you know, getting together and having fun and stuff, they will just go and mix whatever in the lab. That sounds fun. I know. Yeah, <laughs> it was fun, and they had lots of fun doing that. And uh, I was a kid, you know, and to me it was so strange. But mom was the last person I asked actually and the mom was like oh yeah that's what you need to do that you need to moisture and you need to use oil and i thought okay so all these people are telling me this so i started like researching it and um trying you know i got suggestion from some of them some of them i researched myself so then this is how it started then I had colleagues, girlfriends of mine who were complaining about the same issues. Mm -hmm. What were some of the issues? Well, in the winter, 
it was the dryness mm -hmm. and although i would put on on top of the heaters i will have you know pots of water i will boil water in, on the stove in the apartment just to get some moisture in uh, in the apartment yeah it didn't help so it was this very dry environment in the house with stepping out in the wind mm -hmm. or if you go up on the mountains and skiing and all that stuff sure. it was just like i will literally feel like my my face was like five size smaller in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it was all uh, from getting constantly dried out. Constantly. constantly. Dried out. And it just felt so tight. Yeah. And, uh, you know, creams and stuff, it just helped for, at the moment, but it won't, it won't last. They weren't long term solutions. So that's how. So cut to now you're in America, you're married to this lovely man right here. Yes. And you guys, how long ago did you start your skincare line? I started working on it it's almost five years mm -hmm. your products are made from ethically sourced raw ingredients that are never tested on animals and i really really admire that and why is that important like why i mean we have all these skincare lines at the cvs's and at the drug stores and they are full of all these ingredients that i think are toxic but why is it important to get ethically sourced raw organic ingredients for your skin well it is exactly like the difference is between eating organic healthy mm -hmm. healthy food and eating food that or like vegetables that are sprayed with pesticides and chemicals, chemicals. Yeah. and it's pretty much the same i mean the skin is our biggest organ and i think this is something that a lot of people are becoming more aware of even for me i was being very clean with my skincare but i was using a lot of makeup because i didn't even think about it and maybe didn't want to take that extra step to make sure that it wasn't tested on animals and oh that you know and then i when i finally did and went through the different products that i was using and go I can't use these anymore. They've got heavy metals. They've got pesticides. They're they've disgusting. Got all kinds they're of things. horrible. Yeah. They're toxic. And I'm putting these on my eyes and my lips and I can't, I can't do this anymore. I think with, especially with skin, stuff that you're slathering all over on your body or your face, your skin is absorbing all of it and yes. sticking it into your organs because it doesn't know how to break it down because it's not natural. The, the concept of bioaccumulation is one that I was unfamiliar with before we started doing this. And that's, that, that's a big thing. When it's not just that you're putting it on your skin, which absorbs everything, you're putting it on your skin every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For decades. Yeah. And that bioaccumulation becomes a, a real thing with a lot of the chemicals, which are unregulated by our FDA. So let's talk about that because I know you guys are very knowledgeable about that. I remember you mentioned some statistic about Europe versus Euro us. Europe. Europe currently, uh, I, my, this is off the top of my head, so the numbers aren't quite exact and they do change from time to time, but uh, Europe is somewhere in the realm of 1,600 chemical ingredients for personal care products, whether it be makeup, skincare, deodorant, whatever. 1,600 chemicals that are banned outright. Mm -hmm. uh, many others that are seriously regulated in terms of quantities that are allowed to be included and even the age group of the product. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot of, they have some chemicals that they regulate heavily for adults that are completely banned for children's products. Mm -hmm. So that number is, again, to the tune of 1,600. The U.S. for the longest time was 11. Mm -hmm. And even those were only partially banned. Mm -hmm. Currently, uh, my, the latest data I've heard is that the Obama administration boosted that significantly by significantly uh, almost 200% to 30 Wow. But nothing compared to, what did you say, 1,600? 1,600 compared versus to 30. 30. Yeah. And, the th and the thing is that we grow up with the idea that our government is regulating things to protect us. You right. know, we have to click it or ticket. You have to wear a seatbelt, you know, uh, helmet laws, whatever it may be. But when it comes to uh, these chemicals, they just they just aren't. Some of them are. But but in terms of uh, the level of of the intensity that the Europeans and the Asians and, and other places all over the world but here are, are putting into it, it's really minimal. And I think I know the answer and probably what you're going to say, but why is that? It's the answer that's behind so, many, exactly. so many of the things. Money. Follow the money, baby. <laughs> that's follow, what I thought you were going to say. Follow the money. <laughs> yeah. Abs absolutely. It's true. And I think that the bioaccumulation that you're talking about, I would think, has a lot to do with, if not all to do with, the fact that so many people have so many autoimmune diseases and things that they can't, the things that they're not even, they can't even diagnose. I have friends that it took them many, many years to get even diagnosed with something because they had these symptoms. They were not feeling well, but they couldn't exactly be put in a box. 
But, you know, you put a bunch of junk in your body and a bunch of junk in your fabric softener and a bunch of junk in your food and your air and your water. And, hey, it's going to wind up in your body and your body's going to go, I don't recognize this. I'm going to stick it in the liver or in your fatty tissue yeah. or somewhere because I don't know what to do with it. And then you get sick. The average American woman, and I would love to know what the statistic is for men, and I'm sure it's growing, but the average American woman is coming into skin contact with over 500 chemicals a day. I'm sure you're correct, and that's horrifying. Uh, and that is from skincare, from laundry, from cleaning products, from um, your shower curtain. Yeah. Which is giving you phthalates. Well, it's like every time you're in a store, and in California, we have a law where you have to disclose this. You see that sign where it says... That freaking you know, sign. I, I don't know what the exact wording is, but it's like, objects in the store may... Con- Prop 40... What is it? Prop something. I don't remember the prop, but it's... Yeah. yeah warning. 37 or something? Yeah. And it basically says that the there are chemicals in the state of California that are known, carcinogens that are known to cause cancer. And they're in the store. They're, at, they're not only in the store, they're in all the products you're buying, whether it's a plate... Whether it's a piece of clothing, whether it's a lamp, you know, and you don't know um, how bad it is. And I got into an argument, uh, not so much an argument, but a a heated debate (laughs) with a girlfriend of mine in Santa Monica because, and I'm not perfect, but I am very, very aware of my skincare routine and things like that now. And I didn't used to be. And she was using this lipstick and it had... It was a stain, and so it stays for like 24 hours, and it had the most toxic ingredients. I can't even remember, like titanium dioxide and all this stuff that is not meant to, you know, go into the human body. And I said, oh, you know, girl, maybe you should um, look into some natural alternatives. Like, let me give you this book. I remember, you know, years ago, I learned from Sophie Uliano, who's an amazing author, about how to detox your makeup and beauty and skin products. And so I was like, look into her. She'll tell you all the healthy alternatives. And my friend said, this is such a small amount. Why does it matter? And I said, because it's in your lipstick. It's in your mascara. It's in your food. It's in your laundry detergent. It's in your dish detergent. It's in your shampoo. It's in everything. And so that adds up. If you were living on a mountain, eating organic fruits and vegetables, never wearing makeup, you know, drinking alkaline water and laying in the sun all day, and you were only wearing that toxic lipstick, fine. But that's not the case. So our body can detox out a certain amounts. That's what we're born to do. That's what our body does. Our skin, as you said earlier, Andrea, is the largest organ. It's our, also our largest organ of detox. So we're constantly detoxing, whether it's coming out the skin, coming out the armpit sweat, um, t- filtering through the liver, what have you. But we are overloading our body with these toxins. And that's the problem. And the fact that, like you said a few minutes ago, that 1,600 of these chemicals are banned in other countries and only 30 in this country how many chemicals are we exposed to every day? Even us healthy, vegan, organic people over yeah, here, right? A lot. That's the thing. You cannot really avoid it just by going out and breathing. You know, it's it's enough. Literally, expose, by, literally by standing outside. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> Certainly in a city. Yourself yeah. To, and so. there's Wi-Fi and there's all these environmental factors that we can't control. So my whole thing is whatever I can control, I will. Yeah. I know I can't control everything, but I can choose certain skincare products such as your amazing beautiful products and thank you for giving us samples i i'm loving them and loving the oils and everything thank you thank you and so what should be on the ingredients what shouldn't we see in these ingredient lists just like a general rule is be able to read the ingredients if the ingredients sound a little bit you know hard to read how i talk yeah (laughs) in Oils in general, mineral oil should be avoided because that's Best a left petroleum. in the ground. Yeah. Exactly. So what is it's mineral a petro- oil? It's a petroleum based product. Um, but mineral oil sounds so natural and lovely. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> and and it's filled with minimal. filled with nourishing minerals. Yeah, it really yeah. does. Yeah. So that's scary. So plant based oils, essential oils as long as they are not fragrance oils, because again, the fragrance oils that will give the products this beautiful smell and so on, if they're fragrant, there is a difference between the essential oils and the fragrance oils. Mm -hmm. They both might smell exactly the same. However, the method of extraction is very different. Mm -hmm. The fragrance one is extracted through hexane, which again, it's toxic. So if you do like a cold press, like, 
you know, good quality oils, then steam the, distilled. They steam distilled, yes. Those that will be the way to, the way to go, and they have therapeutic um, mm. reasons or utilities, and uh, they can be good not only for the skin but also for the mind. There are some of them that are very relaxing mm-hmm. and good aromatherapy. You know, mm-hmm. good aromatherapy. I have to say, I'm a big nose snob in terms <laughs> of smells. <laughs> right. Um, your products are smell so good, and I can tell. <laughs> I've worked with essential oils. I've had a massage therapy practice for years. I use therapeutic grade, you know, pure oils. Such a difference between those and the ones that are even essential oils that are mainly a filler oil with some essential oil for fragrance. So your your products smell amazing. Thank you. Delicious. Um, I want to talk about the farm to face movement. This is kind of what we were just talking about, but I never heard that phrase before. I love that phrase. Say it again. Farm to face. Instead of farm to table. Exactly. (laughs) So this is removing chemicals from every step of the manufacturer chain. Yeah, it's a relatively new thing. I actually wrote a blog post about it recently, about what it is and the importance of it. And in my research, I couldn't find the term existing before 2012. So we're we're, we're only five years into it, at least as a concept that people have been writing about online. As a concept in skincare, I mean, it's as as old as humanity. Right, Um, right. (laughs) um, I mean, one of the big things that we wanted to focus on when starting this company was not just creating you know, Andrea's wonderful, effective products, but things that would take unnecessary and harmful chemicals out of every stage of the chain. So these are plant-based ingredients. They are growing in fields all over the world because every single one of our ingredients is certified organic. These are fields that are not being sprayed with pesticides, herbicides, things like that. So we're in the midst of catastrophic pollinator die-offs right now, which our entire global food supply is in danger right now because of this birds bees bats insects other that we're, we're in the midst of, of huge die-offs uh, for these pollinators so in the fields that our ingredients are coming from and other companies that are following this farm to face concept these creatures are not being affected by that then the people who are maintaining and harvesting these plants are not getting those chemicals into their system the plants go through minimal processing and the people in the processing plants are not being exposed to those chemicals we as manufacturers are not being exposed to them, which is nice because it's, you know, manufacture is constant. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, on to the end user who, as we mentioned before, is, is, uh, has the issue of bioaccumulation to deal with where she or he are putting these things on on a regular basis, if not daily, if not multiple po- times daily. And so those chemicals are out of that end stage of, of uh, the process as well. And one thing that I focused on in my blog post was that There are companies out there, and we are not one of them, uh, at least not yet. I have ideas that eventually I'd like us to be, but there are companies out there that are taking it to a wonderful extreme, which is that they are growing their own ingredients and making their own products, and that is super admirable. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I would say about that in terms of uh, Andrea reaching the level of effectiveness in the products that she has, where they do what they're supposed to do and uh, moisturize and uh, you know, help deal with fine lines and, and hyperpigmentation and, and, and all of these things. Some of those issues can only be addressed by using plant-based ingredients that grow in other parts of the world. So if you mm-hmm. are a true, honest-to-goodness, farm-to-face company and you're only using what you can grow, you are by definition limiting your ingredients list. There's great stuff out there and I, I admire them all for doing it. I believe that the definition should extend to basically the way I described it before as, as, as just being active and taking the chemicals out of every step of the chain. Yeah, that's good enough for me. I admire that <laughs> so much. It's definitely good enough for me as well. I think that there are so many companies, I mean, I don't know the percentages or anything, but it seems like your company is rare and we have so much respect for you guys for doing that. And there's so many companies that are kind of fake doing it saying, It's organic and sustainable. And then you hear all the reports of how it really isn't. And it's really disheartening. And so I really think that's amazing. And when you said the thing about fine lines, can your products reverse my wrinkles? Tell me how to reverse, how to anti-age with your products. (laughs) I need to know. Um, It will help. However, uh, with wrinkles, because I had eight years of plastic surgery under my belt. Uh, I had an amazing uh, professor. Um, So 
this is what I was doing prior to me going to Geneva. You were a plastic surgeon or you got plastic surgery? No, I was doing my internship with a plastic surgeon. Got it. So Just wanted to clarify. Was, like, that's a no, lot of plastic surgery. No, like, you don't look like you have plastic surgery, but the listeners can't see you right now. I, I, think, so. I, think, we should also, I think we should also qualify this. I, I, Andrea's, Andrea's boss slash mentor is one of the top surgeons in the world. She was, she was top of her class at Harvard, trained by the army in bioterrorism. Uh, she's on the board of the AMA. She is very much a hippie skippy uh, <laughs> a, a doctor as well. She's, she's an unique. amazing person. Yeah. Awesome. And, uh, and Andrea awesome. was her surgical intern for eight years and was performing surgeries with patient consent. Yes. With, with her. Unfortunately, there is only this much we can do with with wrinkles. Definitely moisturizers will help. So having the skin moisturized mm-hmm. uh, and hydrated and stuff will make you less prone to wrinkles. Mm-hmm. However, the uh, skin as we age is just like a piece of paper which you fold once. If, when you fold it, once you can stretch it back to a certain extent, the more you fold it on the same line, the harder it is mm-hmm. to yeah, you know stretch to stretch it back. Totally. And so the skin loses elasticity as we age. So Botox is great for that, even as prevention. Keeping your skin moisturized is the key of preventing you know getting deeper wrinkles. Definitely oils and hydration helps Mm -hmm. and will plump up your skin to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But like giving you when you're in the 40s, you give you baby skin, you know, um, it's a little bit hard without, uh, you know, plastic surgery that will (laughs) like really pull it up and (laughs) stretch it. We're definitely not fans of that. And I think the problem with Botox is that it's a neurotoxin, right? And so we haven't seen the full effects of how toxic this can be. And it's just like the lipstick. Maybe a little bit is fine, but women are starting now in their 20s and doing it for years and years and years. And I don't think we know how bad it's going to be for them We've been hearing that lately, that that, that 25-year-olds are doing it. And when asked why, the the answer is prevention. Prevention, Yeah. yeah. Which is horrifying why a 25-year-old thinks that they need to alter themselves when I feel like most people are their best looking around 25. Wow. But this is a different generation, right? Did you and I grow up with Instagram yeah, and Instagram we didn't filters have selfies. and selfies? Like, yeah. I feel bad to mimic magazine covers and Kardashians who all get plastic surgery at that and age. They're and, and they're, they're airbrushed and they're photoshopped. It's sad. It's, and that's all. They're, I was at, uh, I happened to be at a dinner party where there are a lot of young women in their, I want to say around 2021, 20, I can't tell you how many times I looked around and they were just doing the pouty face and, yeah. the, and the high angle duck, and duck face. Duck, face duck face and doing a high angle and doing a selfie when they had their friends. Like if I was their age and I had a, a cell phone with a camera, I would have been like, hey, let's get a group photo. Right. They're all doing selfies. They're all doing the duck face. And I was like, wow, this is our society has changed so much and this is not necessarily in my eyes a good change i dare to say no it's not a good change because <laughs> they're missing out they're, they're also expecting this kind of perfectionism right. of this veneer let's face it it all we all age i remember being in but massage it's a privilege to age. it is you know really, it's it it's is. like i don't want to say battle scars but it's like that's that what happens when you get older it's part of getting wiser right. one of yeah. my one of my favorite lines of all time is uh, Robert Redford, and you know we all know what he looked like when he was younger, and we yes. know, what he, know what he looks Super like hot. now. And he was asked, uh, so when so many of your peers have chosen to get pulled back and have work done, why have you not done that? And mm-hmm. his response was, I have earned every line on this face. Mm. I love that. Mm-hmm. Smart guy. Yeah. That just silenced us. It just, <laughs> I was really thinking about it, it, it that. It actually did just give me chills. Yeah. <laughs> So we all want better skin, but really your products are designed to not only give us better skin, but to help us not get sick and not get toxic. And so tell us a little bit more about the philosophy behind that and how your products can actually help us stay healthy. My opinion is, and and, and Andrea and I have spoken about this at length, we share this opinion that there are things you can do and there are things that you cannot do. It's unrealistic in particularly living in cities uh, or, you know, traveling or, 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 you know, doing these modern things that we do. It's unrealistic to think that you're going to stop 
coming into contact with plastics on a daily basis. Right. It is it is virtually impossible. I mean, in this very health conscious studio we're in, it's I'm sure there's plastic. O- obviously unavoidable. We have plastic fruit right there. <laughs> that's our <laughs> that's our set decoration oh for our photos and videos. <laughs> oh my god. But imagine if I cut fresh fruit and vegetables no. in here every First time. Of all, it's, not cost it's not cost effective. It's not cost effective. We'd rot. <laughs> but there are things that are unrealistic and then there are things that are realistic. And what it comes down to is what can you do? And and for us, one thing that we knew we could do is take chemicals out of our products because to a large extent, they're simply not necessary. Mm. Water-based moisturizers, for example, frequently have, have lots of chemicals and that's because literally the molecular structure of it, it makes it harder for your skin to absorb. Mm-hmm. And so they have to put in chemical binders and emollients and I'm I'm probably, you know, getting off on the science of this preservatives and things like that that make it easier for your skin to absorb whereas oil is a natural your body produces it naturally so it understands it when it's being put on your skin. And this is a this is a point actually in terms of of keeping you healthy. We're children of the 80s. We were sold on benzoyl peroxide and, mm-hmm. and things like that, things that were anti-oil, things that were... Fat-free fat free, diet. Exactly, fat-free <laughs> in the diet, which we're now... Fat is bad. Yeah, which we're now figuring out that fat is actually good. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, we, were, we were always told to stay away from oils. I still see oil-free mm-hmm. uh, uh, things advertised now. Yeah. But the thing is, is that when you put oils on your, on your skin, your, your body understands them. And if you have oily skin, it will stop producing as much oil or if you have dry skin it will say oh thank you for that and it'll it'll take it in but in terms of you know what you can do i actually have an autoimmune disease uh which i believe is linked to the tetracycline that i was put on as a teenager as an acne preventive i didn't even have acne my my older sister had had it Mm -hmm. and they had put her on it as well Tetracycline has been linked to Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, which I, I have. And I, I, I still remember that the, the pill bottle I had was the biggest pill bottle I've still seen to this day. It was, it was about eight inches high and about two inch diameter. And it was just filled with these blue and yellow pills and that I was told. how long were you on it? Years. Oh years? My God. Yeah, yeah. As a preventative. As a preventative. Yeah. Wow. And that, I believe, led to uh, what became a, a, a near-death wow. illness that um, was not necessary. And I am lucky to have had uh, a very knowledgeable wife with medical background to have nursed me back to health. Um, this is freaking me out right now because I had um, eczema as a kid around my mouth. And it was a family thing. Like people in my family had eczema and they didn't exactly know why it would flare up and then would go away. They didn't exactly know why they put me on tetracycline. It actually went away. And came back later in life, but it was it, I wasn't on it for years. I was on. Oh, it, I mean, like, I think the stuff works, and, it, and lots of chemical based things they didn't, work. But they were kind of like, eh, we'll try <laughs> this. We'll try this. We'll see what happens. It wasn't like, oh, this will help. This is why you know we don't. They didn't know why I had it, and they didn't know what was going to fix it. But they're just throwing stuff at it, right? Right. Right. And I didn't. I've never even heard that that t- that tetracycline has been linked to other. You know, the links are in dispute. There was, a, I think, it was the University of Pennsylvania that came up with the link with uh, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis with tetracycline. And I believe you can go to the National Institutes of Health and see that study. There are other studies that that say that it's inconclusive. I always tell people follow the money, find out who paid for that study. Yep. Find out how extensive that study was. Yep. But uh, in terms of how using these things can make you healthier, I wouldn't go so far as to say make you healthier as keep you healthy by not adding to the chemical pile. And, and the other thing is regarding studies, it is probably true that not all of these chemicals are bad for us. I've read things on phthalates and parabens and things like that that say that maybe some are worse than others. But the bottom line is, how are you, you as the con- consumer going to well, figure the, out which ones are being used and why not just take them out altogether? This, yeah. is, this is my thinking about it. I always view, and Andrea, maybe you can weigh on this theory. <laughs> I have a theory that everybody has their own personal kind of tank of junk as, as to how much their body can get rid of depending upon your genetics, your lifestyle, your diet, how much water you drink, if you, if you drink alcohol, et cetera, et cetera. Just many different factors. So you don't know, it's all based on statistics. So statistical right. population, most people, if you give them tetracycline, okay, there's not a direct link, linked, uh, a direct causal link to XYZ diseases. But you don't know down the line. You don't know how many, like, you're not taking it. The doctors never take into effect. They're starting to, 
uh, functional medicine is starting to, but you're not taking into the factors all of the other things that could lead to disease. And then you're left with, okay, I don't know how I got this, but now I'm stuck with this issue and I don't feel well. It makes me angry. It makes me angry that our government is like, no, it's, yeah, follow the money. It's fine. It's fine. We'll just listen to the lobbyists and you Well, can trace have... amounts are fine. That's their argument. Right. But like we Who said trace earlier, amounts? no one gets trace amounts. Exactly. And so you said you had, you, you were suffering from Crohn's and all sort of, uh, all sort of colitis and Andrea, you nursed them back to health. We've, we've interviewed people and them coming out of those diseases have been very intensive, completely changing their diet and lifestyle. So what did you do? What did I do to get well? Yeah. I'll let Andrea answer Doctor? that one. Doctor? Uh, well, I mean, it, it, literally it just happened like from one minute to another with him. It was very strange. And I was, uh, I, was out on, I was out on a golf course. I had a meeting that night, some business people, and I looked down at my ball and, and the, the best thing I can describe is that it did this bizarre digital move in my vision. It just, it, it looked like it went pixelated for a second. That was the first symptom. And by midnight that night, I was violently ill mm. and, and it just got worse from there for months. And so we, we, at first we thought it's just some food poisoning. It, it seemed like, so we thought that, well, it has to run its course, you know, mm-hmm. but it got, it, it just went on and on for long than longer than it should have right. and so then we started doing the investigations and so on and um, unfortunately he fell onto the wrong doctor's hands and me I have never had any interest in the gastroenterology beside of what I had in school you know we all do all the rounds, rounds and yeah it was a part of medicine that I ever considered so <laughs> I was I was so to- on top of my research that I was talking to those doctors and I knew way more than they did uh, regarding his his issues. Plus I believe I, it. I was talking with some of my professors from med school from from Europe and so on. So we were going back and forth, and they just couldn't understand why they were not taking action here, but. In fact, which is, this is another, you know, it's a very sore topic for me with the whole healthcare system in America. Uh, me being European and so on, and I still keep my, my medical insurance from Switzerland because uh, yeah. I, it's, it's I the one I trust. Cameron had a great insurance here, which doctors were just draining and draining because they were paying left and right and they had no incentive and they and they were trying to force me to have unnecessary, unnecessary. Surger- yeah. surgeries two unnecessary procedures oh so how did my you God. deal with that did you just say no i did i did i was i was fortunate enough to have andrea as a as a wealth of knowledge to give me the confidence to say no to this doctor i i without going too far into it i basically was a victim of severe malpractice and and oh my god and yeah. when that became evident that doctor was removed from my team without anyone talking to me he just never came back oh. and his partner in his uh, firm showed up one day and was was all of a sudden my new guy and my surgeon I'd already been through multiple surgeries she was going on vacation and before she left she said you seem to be improving we're not going to do anything more until I come back I'll be back in a week we're not going to do anything more until I come back. She left and he tried to force me to uh, have an ileostomy uh, bag put on. <gasps> and yeah. I and I just said I just Can said I'm not I'm not doing that. And he Good for you. And he screamed at me. He 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 said you should have been on a table on a table doing that yesterday. You're doing this today or tomorrow as soon as I can get you on there. And I wow. and and I said no, I'm sorry, but my my surgeon said that no more procedures were necessary. And he lied to me and he said, I've been in email communication with her and she wants you to do this. And I said, and <gasps> this I, is shocking. And I, wow. and, I, and I said, no, you haven't. And, and he said, yes, I have. And I said, show them to me. Wow. Good for you. And she came back uh, and I fought him off and, and she came back at the end of that week. And, and lo and behold, he had lied to me. And this was all in. This an- is the second doctor that's. Yeah, yeah, but, but uh, they were all they were, from the state. they were partners. They were partners. In, they were par- yeah, partners in a GI in a GI firm. So they were partners in crime. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Andrea would love it if I would name them now, but I'm not going to because I don't want to get sued or anything. Um, <laughs> but but but, uh, uh, but it's scary that these people are still out there treating people. I yeah. mean, I've had this experience with dentists where they wanted to drool my teeth for it. That's I mean, that's just teeth. This is your freaking colon where they're telling you you're going to be on a bat, like going to change your life forever. Well, it wasn't. That was the that was the thing is that it it, it was more than one surgery he was putting up, putting me up to it because was, because it was a, re- a reversible stuff. one. So I had to have it done and then I had to have it undone. But uh, once you what? cut, yeah. once you cut a tissue, it's not like you, it's going to stick back so perfectly like that never happened. Oh. You know? but, but, that's you what, but that's what doctors put forth in America. I don't know what the doctors like are like in Europe, but that's what they do here. That's I mean, and that's their basis. Their basis for treatment is pills or cutting. Cut right. burn. That's it. But, you know, it's because it is it's a huge money maker yeah. in Europe. Doctors uh, are on salary. My mother was a doctor all her life. Doctors are on a salary. Yeah. So they have the incentive of getting you back on your feet and off you go. They don't have incentive of keeping you in the hospital. The longer they keep, I was going back and forth and back and forth with Cameron to the emergency room and then he'll stay for, I don't know, another week. Then I'll take him back home. They had no incentive because he had such a good insurance that was paying for right. everything. Right. They had no in- incentive of getting him better. And let me, let me better. just ask you a question because oh. this is a big thing with people that don't, that, the opponents of, I use air quotes, socialized healthcare. Did your mother live a good life? Did she have a yes, decent salary? Absolutely. Because that's always the thing. Oh, you know, they think uh, doctors need to be paid a bazillion dollars in order to do a good no. job. and. It's very hard for me to understand this mentality. You yeah. go into medicine to help people. To you help don't people. you don't go into medicine to become rich. If that's your purpose, then you're not right for becoming right. a doctor. Yep. You're right so there. Right. And you that's know? the so problem. It's, There's so many people. Here people are just like gazillion dollars they yeah. make as becoming a doctor. Uh, they, well, the thing is that also the medical school is unnecessarily expensive. Yep. So right there, when you come out of medical school, it, it costs, it, you're in debt, you know, yeah. over yeah. your eyeballs. Yeah. But also then it's the idea that you're going to make tons of money and tons of money. So then when you work into a hospital, they expect you to bring in, to do procedures. While I was in Florida doing my my internship with uh, with my mentor, we will have every once in a while, we will cover for other other doctors who are going in, uh, uh, on holiday or whatever. And uh, we will have patients, you know, Florida, you know, lots of skin um, cancer and various types. And then you'll have like 70 years old or 80 years old patients with some um, uh, skin, uh, uh, skin cancer, some type. And they will do like skin grafts and trans skin transplants and this and that when those people already had like you know five times more skin that they needed so you could cover chop you know <laughs> cut around and mm-hmm. close it but they what they will do they will do unnecessary procedure because every single procedure the bill. It, it will be an extra bill and they will pay you know for an extra procedure it will be extra money so that's why i am so reluctant on like I don't even want to end up in a hospital here. Nor and do I. Thank God, my my insurance, my Swiss insurance, pays for my ER, and that's it. It's the only country in the world where my Swiss insurance does not cover, and from it covers only the ER. And from there, they pay for my medical transportation anywhere in the world where I choose to be. Wow. So. For that, that I have a piece. I would rather die on my way to somewhere yeah. <laughs> than end up here, just based on the experience I had with with Cameron. And you know, it's not it's not just it's it's every level, right? It's the hospitals making profits. Pro- hospitals didn't used to make profits in the '70s. They were run by charitable or religious institutions. And then it's the insurance companies, and they're taking out how many dollars out of every three spent. And there was an amazing article in Time Magazine uh, a, a couple of years ago, and and. I, I, even John Stewart said, "I wouldn't. I wouldn't normally say that there was an amazing article in Time Magazine, but there was, <laughs> and it was, and it was on the financials of our healthcare system. And one of the things that really stood out for me, I, I've never forgotten it, is that go to any small town in America, and the quietly one of the richest people you'll find is the hospital administrator. Hmm. And it went into all of the money that they are allowed to take from pharmaceutical companies." 
uh, oh, in, in, so in, gross. Uh, that is legally allowed to go directly into their pockets, ca- cash money. And I, I should point out one thing about what Andrea was saying about her mentor. Those people they were finding with the unnecessary procedures, those were other people's patients. And, and her mentor actually banned pharma reps from coming into their office. Thank mm-hmm. God. Yeah, we never had one. Well, there was only one that was coming with um, introducing the new uh, implants, uh, breast implants, this kind. Or That was it. He'll come once a year and show us the new implants. But other than that, pharmaceuticals and stuff, no, no. No, no, no yeah. free lunches, no trips, no, no, no pens. No pens. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no pets. No. And so let's just talk a little bit about what the pharmaceutical reps do. So they come in and they're trying to sell a drug to a doctor. Is that yep. accurate? Yes. And the more you prescribe it, you got kickbacks. Kickbacks. And the people they hire to be the pharma reps are frequently Playboy Playmate mm-hmm. and, and uh, well, that's, uh, NFL that's cheerleader types. If you're a male doctor, <laughs> if you're a male doctor <laughs> then yes. There was a great but, movie with Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, what's oh, her name? Did you I, see that? I didn't see it. I read the script for it. Are you in the film industry? How did you read the script for it? I am in the film industry. I, I've been primarily producing TV commercials as my bread and butter for 20 plus years. Um I wrote and produced a documentary with also with some wonderful, uh, talented people that came out a couple of years ago. What uh, was the documentary called? It was called This American Journey, and Ooh. it was about an English actor and an Australian photographer who had only ever lived in bastions of liberalism, Brooklyn, New York, and Venice, California. <laughs> and, and, oh, I got to see this. And it was, put, it, was, it was right after Obama had been elected, and they were suspicious as to whether or not it was just good campaigning or whether or not there really was hope and change happening in America. So they drove from New York to Los Angeles, taking a very circuitous route, interviewing so-called ordinary Americans about their, their opinions of, the, uh, of these things. They, they, the twist on it is that they're both out of their minds and they had no idea how to make a film. Um, <laughs> one, of the, one of those people is uh, Paul Blackthorne, who's on, uh, he's on a CW show called Arrow right now, and he yeah. directed it. Uh, and uh, he's a dear old friend of mine. And I produced it with him. As they crossed the country, their line of questioning went from very specifically political to far more expansive into the metaphysical. And there's a cute dog that shows up along the way, too. Gotta love a cute dog. <laughs> this sounds like the best film ever, by the way. Everyone knows I'm obsessed with documentaries. I'm a documentary filmmaker as well. But Are you really? I, yes. I literally can't wait to see this. this American is it Journey. on Netflix? This American Journey is not currently on Netflix, and it was on Hulu. I don't know if it still is. Okay, I'll uh, check. My but Hulu. it is available on Amazon on DVD, and I think it's on. Is it on Amazon Prime? I don't. I don't. I know. have I all of it. I have Prime. <laughs> I will find it. So okay. That, so that movie I mentioned is called Love and Other Drugs. Love Jake, and Other Drugs. Jake Gyllenhaal and Anne Hathaway. It's actually a very good movie because he is a he becomes a rep for he eventually winds up doing uh, Viagra. Yeah. Or he, he manages to get he he starts he becomes a rep. And they show them all the training and they show how fast they have to have their pitch. And he gets he gets really good. He gets to be a good salesman. And then he gets freaking Viagra when it gets launched and he wants it. And he's right outside of, I think he's in Pennsylvania or something, near, near New York City. And he meets uh, Anne Hathaway, who is a Parkinson's patient. And he <clears throat> falls in love with her and sees the other side of being unwell and having to, to deal with something that even with expensive, expensive drugs is not managed and not healed. How have I never seen this one too? I'm I don't obsessed. Know. I'm obsessed. <laughs> it's it's actually a very very well done film. That sounds so good. But I remember why, I remember that because a long time ago, uh, when I was you know auditioning and acting, and my my aunt was like, "Oh, you should become a pharmaceutical rep. You're cute." And I was like, "I don't believe in that. I don't want to do." She's like, "You can make a lot of money." And I'm like, "No, I'll be a massage therapist." That's, That's blood. That that becomes blood money. I know. Yeah. Yep. So gross. And so we digress. I would love to hear how you got through that time. So you're dealing with all these doctors who are trying to cut you and do all this crazy shit. And thank God you were smart enough to say no. And thank God you had Andrea to help you out of that. But how did you truly Because most people would have just done it. Most people would because yeah. we don't know better. They, they trust. Well, you have to, you're supposed to trust your doctor. Yeah, that's what my parents did. Both of my parents thought whatever the doctor said, it was like God speaking. Yep. He was the law. He was God. He was everything. There was nothing outside of that. It's, uh, yeah, there is this kind of mentality, you know, you because people in general, when they are sick, they are very vulnerable. So when they go to the doctor, it's like the doctor is going to better them. Has it's going to save them. Yeah. has all the answers and so on. 
to me, what was in, in with his experience, what was the the most frustrating thing it was when I would look at them, I would ask all these questions, you know, very pertinent questions, because I knew my stuff. And they kept asking, are you a doctor? And they said, that's irrelevant question. Please answer me. Why are you doing it this way and not that way and so on? And they would just look at me and they were so puzzled. And when I see they, She intimidated that type, them. They were like, who is this person? That, <laughs> yeah, that's all they could ask. Are you a doctor? Are you a doctor? And I said, that's irrelevant for you, whether I'm a doctor or not. Please answer. Give me an explanation. Why are you doing it one way and not another and so on? And they didn't have any answer. So how we solved it is because I have done my research and oh, I found <laughs> I found the best doctor that was specialized in immuno autoimmune, auto, auto auto immune diseases, basically uh, immune uh, diseases that's, that are linked to the gastroenterology and stuff at UCLA, Ron and Reagan. A doctor that's phenomenon and uh, the, the problem was that he was seeing patients once a week for two hours and the rest of the time he's reviewing cases from all over us wow. all over the world uh so all over the world so to get to him was almost impossible but i just would call him on every day but you and did be it. like Please, can you just look at it? At that point, he lost like 50 pounds 75. or something. Oh, my 75 God. 75 pounds. I mean, you see how big he is. And, you know, he was, he barely could walk. He will oh. have like a pain, a pump that will give him shots of painkillers in his abdomen. It was, he was in really bad shape. Mm. And so finally I got him on the right hands. And the moment I got into that, office with him he was barely walking and stuff and i saw that man that was looking at him and he was in such bad shape and was looking at him like i know what i have to do that was the moment when i felt like you know huge boulder was lifted off my my shoulder i'm like okay I now a, i can you know release him to someone who does know way more than i do yeah. and knows how to and Look at him, you know, it's like he never had any issues ever since. Yeah. However, this does bring me to a very, very pertinent point for this conversation we're having. I have been, so that was seven years ago. And since then, I have been on potent uh, drugs. Um, I have to go every eight weeks to a cancer center and have a, a, an infusion over a period of about four hours. It's not chemo, but it's it's got similarities to it. I have to take uh, it's an immunosuppressant drug, but it's like a, the new the newer generation. The of biologics. Drugs. It's a biological yeah uh, drug. But the point that this brings me to is that there is a natural therapy. It's called helminthic therapy. Okay. And it involves ingesting uh, worms. The eggs, uh, these micros, the, the, you don't even see them. They're microscopic. Yum. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking of the worm farms that, that make people's compost. Well, okay. So, so in countries like Cameroon and uh, Burma and Thailand and places like that, the prevalence of autoimmune disease is low to non-existent. And the reason is that in their soil are these worm eggs mm -hmm. and it's everywhere they're everywhere and these worms have to complete their life cycle by going through a warm-blooded creature mm. and and they're getting yeah. con they're consuming these eggs constantly from birth to death they're consuming them constantly they're as i said they're microscopic and they're everywhere i'll admit i don't totally know the science of it but then again I, i'm not sure that anybody does totally know the science of it <laughs> but the general idea is that they are creating a habitable environment for themselves and they, they control are, the inflammation in the colon in order for them to thrive they control the inflammation so it's the the um, immune uh, system's reaction which attacks the colon because basically that's what happens is it it attacks it like it's a foreign you know body right uh, so these worms they keep down the inflammation in order for them to thrive and then you know through you eliminate them and uh and then they 
they redo the, their cycles, they lay, lay their eggs in the in the ground and, you know, you ingest them again, you know, through just like the daily stuff or people who chew their nails, like but, me. But the key... Oh, and <laughs> but, but, the, but the key thing is that it's not just uh, things like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. It's also like multiple scler- sclerosis yeah. and, and rheumatoid arthritis and all yeah. kinds of autoimmune diseases. Yep. People uh, on a much smaller scale are, are, are getting these things, if they're getting them at all. But when those same people move to Stockholm or Minneapolis or wherever, uh, Western countries that have cleaned all of their environments and, and constantly using things like uh, uh, antibacterial soaps and, right. and things like that, all of a sudden, those same people start getting those diseases. And so the theory, the theory is that we have cleaned ourselves into mm-hmm. ill health. Now, here's the tricky part. I believe that. Here's the tricky part. Very much in the same way that the pharmaceutical industry is trying to extract THC from marijuana to make things like Marinol, they're trying to figure out what the worms do so they can stick it in a pill. Right. You can get the worms. There, there are various firms that make them. Are they and, on Amazon? And n- no, no, that's the thing. They are not. They, <laughs> they're are, not in they, the US. they are not made in the U.S. They're made in places like Germany and and uh, Thailand. Actually, has a f- fantastic uh, medical uh, community. They're making them there. If you want to take them as an American, the dosage that my doctor, the amazing doctor that Andrea found me, uh-huh. he's one of the top guys in the world who approves the studies for this kind of therapy globally. And what my first question to him when I came in was, is this a therapy that's viable for me? He said, if you can do it, I highly recommend you do it. How much? It was going to be somewhere to the tune of 10000 a month for... <laughs> For, oh my god! For worms? For, yep. Yeah. For for the treat, he wanted to start me off on a pretty heavy treatment. It was going to be somewhere to the tune of like ten thousand a month. Or you could go to Thailand and play in the dirt. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. Eat, oh. And eat. I mean, look, yeah. this is a whole. This is a topic for a whole other podcast. Yeah, it is. They're, That's they're, what I said. Didn't I'm I say this to you? Totally I was fascinated. Like, they're going to be back a bunch of times because yeah. we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> There's a community out there. It's almost like pirate radio of old or whatever. They're they're like. Illegally creating their Damn, own worm we need to supplies. Write a script about this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, may, right. Maybe, but uh, the the irony is that I could take these if our insurance would cover them, but our insurance doesn't cover them because nobody can make any money on them. Of course. And as we speak, there are big pharma companies that are trying to figure out what switches the worms flip and stick it in a pill, and then my insurance will cover it. So we just came full circle, didn't we? <laughs> Back to follow the money. Follow the money. And that the natural cures can't be patented, and therefore insurance doesn't cover it because no one can make any money off of it. And yeah. that is definitely what's wrong with America. The US. Yeah. And so I really appreciate hearing all of this. Like I had no idea where it was going, but like I'm shocked, I'm angry, and I'm I'm really happy that you're doing well. But I want you to have that therapy if you need it. You yeah. Know? yeah, I mean, I mean, that's that, get your that, worms. That's that. That's just it. Is that is that that due due to the economics of it right now? I am taking potent chemicals on a regular basis. Which then, if you want to bring it full circle back to skincare and how how it can make you healthier or or at least keep you healthy, it, it's once again, what can you do to take these these chemicals out of your life? And yeah. in my in my case, I currently can't take certain chemicals out of my life. Right. Do you do any um, detoxification to detox uh, out um, some of the, for the side effects or anything like that? Is there anything you do to counteract, or would that be counterintuitive? I the, the short answer is no, because the process of the infusions knocks me out for about two days. Mm-hmm. It it it, I, it just drains me of all my energy. Other than just lie down and take care of myself, I'm not sure what I what I can do. Mm-hmm. Um, but but what I again what I can do in other areas of my life is, I mean, we primarily eat organic and we have largely cut out animal products out of our lives. And, and, um, you know, these are things that can be done. Got it. All right. So I just want to go back to the skincare line and just make sure that you guys get all the shout outs in the world. I know you have a special offer for Food Heals Nation. So let us know where everyone can find you online and let us know the difference between apothecary 90291 and 10 degrees cooler, just so our listeners are clear. Apothecary 90291 is the official name of our company, but it did dawn on us at some point that that was a bit of a mouthful and hard for people to remember numbers. 
So to make it e easier, and uh, without even thinking of this, we had already come up with the tagline 10 degrees cooler, which is a nod to 90291 Venice, California, mm -hmm. uh, where if you live in Los Angeles, most people know that generally speaking, it's going to be 10 degrees cooler at the beach, yep. sometimes 20. <laughs> uh, but, Unfortunately. <laughs> but, 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 but it's also us being, being a, a little bit tongue in cheek about living by the beach, sort of feeling 10 degrees cooler in general. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and so it occurred to us that that was far easier to remember. So that is our website. It's www.10degreescooler.com. And all our social handles, Instagram, Facebook, etc., cetera, uh, are 10 degrees cooler. And it's one zero, I should say. It's the, the number one and zero degrees cooler. And we really do uh, hope that people will follow us on Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff. So I'm going to personally like say this to our Food Heals Nation because I love these products. I was gifted them when I tried their Luminous Face Oil. My skin was luminous. And it was we luminous. Didn't even, I wanted to talk about the importance of oils, but we're going to have you guys back because we have a lot to talk about. Um, but I, I, I use these products. I love their products. Go and check them out. For sure. And 10 I degrees, 10 degrees cooler cooler dot com, dot com or um, 10 degrees cooler And they on smell social. beautiful and they're completely chemical free. Oh, and the and the the Food Heals discount code uh, you can do all caps or all lowercase, but don't mix and match because the system doesn't like that. Um, <laughs> and it's twenty percent off your entire cart. And we're so grateful that that you gave us this platform to talk about them. That is so generous. Thank you so much. And can each of you just shout out your favorite product that you guys produce? Number three for me, Midnight in Corsica. I love Face the title. Oil. It's, a, it's an oil that uh, has Immortelle, which is the flower of Corsica. So it's that's, a beautiful that's... smell. I love both of them. Yeah. I have, I've tried both of the face oils. So, yeah. <laughs> and Immortelle is incredibly powerful. It's a, it's a very reparative uh, oil, so it's, it's, it's good stuff. For me, hands down, uh, our Zero Two Cleansing Balm Overnight Mask. I think I was saying to you, Susie, mm -hmm. before we, before we uh, turned the mics on, my, my skincare uh, regimen before Andrea and I started this company maybe was some sunscreen every once in a while. That was it. <laughs> uh, uh, but I, I've gotten excited about uh, what Andrea makes and, and that particular product. I, I like to shave and, and jump in the shower and get my face all steamed up and then put just cover my, my, my face in that but, and before going to bed and then I leave it on all night long. And it just, it, it just makes it soft and smooth and I love it. It's great, and and it, and, it, and, it, and it smells. It smells like it smells like one of those chocolate oranges, you know, that you you hit on the table and the, the, the yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> I remember those. Because it's made it's made with uh, uh, cocoa butter and and uh, and oh, it's got papaya oil in it and stuff. A good, good stuff. tip for when you put when you use the oils for the face is good when you use it on moist face, so not on dry face. You wash your face and stuff, and you leave it a little bit moist. And then you put a few drops, and then you pat it into your face. It's it's the best it's way. The best perfect. way, yes. Well, thank you so thank much you. for being here. So make sure Food Heals Nation to follow them on social media at 10 degrees cooler, one zero degrees cooler. And make sure to follow them on Instagram. Let's get them some followers, some real followers. No, <laughs> fake followers. And use the coupon code Food Heals for 20% off your purchase. Thank you for that generous discount. Thank you. Thanks thank you so much here. for thank having you guys. us. Thank you so much. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put in their Lululemons and take a yoga class while drinking a green juice. If you experience any of these symptoms, text your priest immediately.